Okay, let's start. Should we? Okay, let's let's put some things here. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna evaluate the boss on if I found them cool or not by the moves they use or by by the looks of it, by by their design. I don't know much much about the lore, so I can't really say anything about that. I think that that's gonna be the qualities, right? This is four kings. Four kings basically was pretty fucking boring, right? What did you have to do? You you just have to be really close to him to not get hit by the sword because it has a sweet spot mechanic. And if you get hit by the hilt, it's just fucking no damage, right? Okay. Um, Able tanking DPS race. Dude, you're right. It, it was basically just a DPS check, right? I felt like this boss was basically like a gatekeeper that showed you, hey, if you don't beat me, you're not ready for the rest of us, right? So it's it's like a benchmark. It was like a benchmark test, like fucking checking your FPS if you're ready for online play or, or your, your, your internet connection check or something like that, right? I feel like he was okay. He was a B. He looked kind of cool. I didn't understand why the fuck they were called four kings when you're like literally like at least five of them there at the same time. You know, if there was a cap at four, I would have understood because like, you know, how, how the fuck can they, they can re like, not re respawn something like that but they at some point were just like more than five i mean there was a cap of four really i felt at the end of at the same time okay maybe okay then maybe i'm stupid okay i feel like i feel like b is pretty fair right i feel like b is pretty fair i mean look wise very they look like fucking wilted rose but i was poetic i think b is pretty fair okay gaping dragon yeah, the design was pretty okay. Yeah, they were kind of cool, but else they didn't do really. They didn't really do much, and for a little, for like a listen, like basically, the full Lord Souls were like the elite four of Pokemon, right? And for that, they were kind of disappointing. So I think B is fair. Gaping Dragon, Gaping Dragon is fucking uninteresting. Tanky, Unnerst He was a bullet sponge, basically, right? I don't think it was because I dealt too little damage. I think he's just naturally very tanky, right? Fucking stupid ass boss looks stupid. Fucking his head looks stupid. His body looks stupid. His attacks are stupid and uninteresting. The only cool thing... The only cool thing about the boss was when you're done with him, right? So honestly, I'll put him in D. He fucking sucked. Oh yeah, now I'm gonna rate... I'm gonna rate them on... Also on like... The impression they left, right? Like the difficulty, if I thought, okay, the, the boss was difficult, but it was satisfying to beat. And then like, okay, whatever. He goes from tiny croc to a big ass monstrosity. The cutscene, the, the spawning cutscene was pretty cool, I have to admit that. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Actually, let's watch it. And maybe, maybe it can save him to C tier, but honestly, I don't think so. And he's just fucking this thing. Okay, here he still looks cool, kind of like the the serpent man. And then like, oh, what the fuck? Oh my god! Like, okay, here it looks kind of epic. Not gonna lie, this if I when I saw when I first saw the boss, I was like, oh, what the fuck? That's disgusting, but also kind of cool. I mean, he's a dragon, just a fat fucking lore. What do you mean, fat fuck? Also, is he an everlasting dragon? Was he that? Is he like corrupted or something? I think that still doesn't save him from D tier. I think that, that he literally was such a fucking glutton that he started growing teeth all over. Oh, what the fuck? So he ate all the fucking time. Okay, that's kind of weird. But, you know, I think D tier is the only place for him. Okay. Sif. Sif was so easy as a boss. That's a little bit unfortunate. I think I beat him first try. But the emotion he carried and the whole fucking... You knew you kind of had to do it. Even though you didn't want to. And it's a dog. You know, he's at least A tier. I, w I, I would understand if people put him S tier. But he wasn't like challenging enough. In a good... Plus after the, the DLC scene. Honestly, we can watch that too. I know, I know Sif used it in that fight, but was it the sword that Taurus wielded? It was, oh, it's way too big for a Taurus, right?
Is that... Is he using that? Oh no... Wait, what? What does the normal cutscene look like again? Oh no... It's actually a, bit, a bigger variant of cutscene than I thought it would be. I feel like the only thing, like, keeping Sith from S tier is like... Is like the, the boss was just way too easy. I don't know if I was over quit, but he was just way too easy. I, I like Sif a lot though. Okay, the big boy himself, Gwyn. I think Gwyn's fight was fucking epic. It it was really cool, right? Because the sound like when I when I went in and the fucking piano already emotional. He was not not a tyrant, not a god, not a fucking king. It was just a guy who's like grasping onto the last thing what he thought was best for the world well obviously it wasn't even in the first place it was very emotional like to see this withering old man who was who you never saw in his like prime state where he was like a god to the whole country or world i don't know how big the world of dark souls is it was very yeah it was rough so i would also understand if people put a mess okay iron golem I think Iron Golem was... I think he didn't have any impact on me, really. He was easy. He wasn't too impressive. It was kind of boring, even. He didn't do much, really, right? Iron Golem, he had, like, no significance in the lore or in the game or anything. I feel, I feel like even though I don't know much about Gaping Dragon, right? I think Gaping Dragon was a bigger deal. Honestly, I think I might actually switch in places. Because Iron Golem was boring. He just shows up and dies, yeah? <laughs> Uh, I don't really care about Iron Golem, so I think I'm gonna bump up Gaping Dragon to C and put Iron Golem in, as the only D for now. Because at least Gaping Dragon had a cool cutscene and he just showed up. Oh yeah, the only thing... I, if if Gwyn had like a cool cutscene, I would have probably put him in S. But he didn't. That was weird. Why did the final boss of the game did not have a cutscene? That's so odd. That's the point. What do you mean? That's the point. Because his glory is over. That's why he doesn't doesn't deserve a a cutscene. Well, I don't know about that. It's pretty much a hollow scene. I'm old man. Yeah, like maybe from like a lore standpoint, it makes sense that he doesn't get a cutscene. But but like, does it really matter? Like, I think as a as the last boss, he still deserved a cutscene, man. Come on, man. Even even I think there could be a cutscene where it like emphasize the the whole thing that he's a senile old man now that only clings on the last fucking hope he has. I think, actually, I think they just didn't give him a cutscene because the game was rushed in the end, right? So maybe, maybe they actually did win as like one of the last things, which is usually not a normal process in, in game development, but I think, I feel like the lack of cutscene was better. That's an interesting point of view, possible, maybe, but, but usually like the last level is usually not the last level ever produced in game. So I think, I, I would imagine they even had like the, the fight very early on because the fight was not very hard either, right? I, I didn't have to use that many tries on it and you could parry him. It was like more on a like a eye level thing. Because all the other bosses they look down they look down on you, they don't really see you as an equal. Well, that's not true. Like their their attitude, maybe see thought that. And like some some bosses do, right? So that was more like a symbolic boss fight, more than anything. I think like the last, the real last boss fight was the Menace, of course. And according to lore, when it's easy if you parry, yeah, that's kind of, I, I don't know, it makes, it's cool that you can parry him, but it also takes away some of the boss fight. I, I actually expect it's a little bit more, but I still thought it was a very cool, impactful boss fight. Okay. Back to Moonlight Butterfly. Honestly, D tier. I don't have to explain much. It's a it's a side boss. It has an interesting mechanic. He's very very fucking boring. I think I took some tries on that shit. It it was still so boring, dude. It was a bad boss. Honestly, it, he looked cool, but it was boring. I don't think I have to say much about Moonlight Butterfly. It's shitter boss. Yeah, you're right. Shitter boss. Gravelord Nito. 
Uh, Nito was very cool from like a visual standpoint, and he's one of the big boys uh, alongside Gwyn, right? So I feel like his boss fight was not very spectacular either. It was a funny mechanic because it was thematically very cool, right? You 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 run into the grave and when you have all these fucking skeletons and you can't really kill him because he's the necromancer and shit and he commands the dead and all that stuff. I feel like if there was a spot between B and A, I would probably put him there, but for now I'd just put him low high B. High B because A is already so full. A would be so full. I think high B, right? High B is okay. I don't know much about the lore, but he's the reason why why people can die, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go with Ornstein. No, that's small. Is there own Ornstein like separated? No, that's just I think it counts for both of them. Um Ornstein and Small, very cool boss fight. The look of them was so fucking cool, not gonna lie. They fit perfectly into an Orlando and the whole look of them, it just felt like I was in the turf, it looked so fucking cool. It was super nice. Also, a very cool boss fight. Honestly, I'd give it an S, but due to fucking glitches I had with them, hell no, they're not gonna go to S. If I'm gonna arrange a, a, the, the tier list later and we're gonna go to, maybe they can go to S, but like this, no. I think we're, I'm gonna put them above Sif. O and S is where base game peaked. Honestly, I agree. I That felt like an epic fight. Like, Unironically epic. The only thing that took away from it was the fucking Ornstein dash glitch and unintended blocking from Small. When he turned around and then you hit his hammer and you couldn't hit Small directly. So you hit his hammer and his hammer hammer doesn't have a hitbox, so you don't deal any damage. And sometimes the hammer, when you turn around, like pushed you away during uh, during like strike animation, and that fucking pissed me off so much. Oh boy, yeah, yeah, we're not gonna go to S. Uh, still, uh, A is pretty decent. I think look wise, Ornstein is probably the coolest boss in the whole game. Look wise, um, and I think that's where where he's gonna be a pinwheel. Well, that's a meme, right? I don't have to say much. Pinwheel could have been such a cool boss fight if he didn't die with three hits because I thought it was kind of cool where you drop down in like some kind of messed up laboratory library thing. It looked so cool. And you get the way you guys like baited me into hype was fucking hilarious, not gonna lie, because he died in four hits, I think. I think we killed him in four hits. I think D is pretty fair. Who cool lore shitter fight? Well, I don't know the lore, but it was a shitter fight. It looked cool with the meant to be fought early, but I, well, I think that's like maybe a mistake by the game, which honestly, the way the ba game is structured, I, I would expect there is no way to avoid mistakes like these. Because I think a majority of the players will fight this boss very late on. I think nobody is going to fight them, fight him as early as intended, right? Because the fucking way to pinwheel is messed up, right? I think the enemies before pinwheel are way stronger than pinwheel himself, right? The fucking, you meet the skeleton dogs before him, right? The giants. I think you meet them before pinwheel, don't you? I, th that kind of gives me the, the feeling that he's not supposed to be fought early. Because the enemies before that are frustrating, frustratingly strong, and they one shot you. They, I was, I was there very late, and I still got one shot by the by the by the uh, skeleton dog. So I don't know, dude. It it certainly feels like a boss that you should fight early, but the way the game works is just not. It's just not happening. Skeleton dogs were after pinwheel. Okay, I stand corrected. What was before pinwheel? The wheel skeletons, right? Normal skeletons, necromancer, and skeleton wheels. Well, okay, fair enough. But like, there's no reason to go there before, right? Because when you hit the roadblock of the fucking huge ass skeletons and Nito, and when you're like, what the fuck am I supposed to do here? It's kind of weird because you don't have a reason to go there if you if you don't want to immediately go for Nito. So. It's just kind of a weird mistake, I think. But D D is fine. D D is cool. Maybe even I actually like even even though the boss fight was so slow, I also put him above Iron Golem and Butterfly. Seif. Seif. I feel like Seif is really cool from the look of it. His boss fight was eh. 
But I thought like the mechanic that like first you have to die to him when he put you into prison, and from there on you you confront him at like the the his invulnerability crystal is really cool thematically. The boss fight itself was kind of boring. I liked the cutscene before it. Still kind of okay. B plus above Nito for sure, but under maybe no. I feel like I'm already overcrowding a. Maybe it's because the boss were just generally good. Okay, what's this? Asylum Demon? Is that Asylum Demon? Warm up boss fight. I don't know. I can't say really much about it. It's like the first boss fight, right? As Demon Park. Yeah. I think C is pretty okay. It's unfair to put the first boss in, in D, I think. The boss was just showing you what you're in for. So I think he did a good job with that. So it doesn't matter that much. Uh, Is that... The second one, I forgot the name of it. Stray Demon. You return there, you fight Stray Demon. Uh, I think C is fine too. He's basically just fucking reskin. Of Stray. I felt, I felt like, did you really do anything different than Asylum Demon? I felt it was basically like a freebie. Get a plus 15 weapon early on. Magical attacks. I, did, I don't even remember that. Yeah, oh yeah, he exploded sometimes. What's... He's an optional boss, right? He's not that big of a deal, so I think C is okay. Is that Taurus Demon? Taurus Demon, I don't even remember what he really looked like. He's not really that... It was an early boss, right? You fought him on... Somewhere? Yeah, you fought him somewhere. It wasn't on the roof, right? That was Bell... That was Bell Gargoyles. I think C is okay here. He didn't really do much. I don't even remember his moveset. On the narrow wall. Oh, yeah, that was a cool... Like, a look. But else, I don't know, man. It just didn't feel, it just didn't feel that cool. I I barely remember him, so I guess he's not even worthy of that. Bed of Chaos, fucking Isolith bosses, right? Um, Isolith. I don't know. I would put him either D or C. It was not even. I I I feel like it's almost unfair to rate Bed of Chaos, right? Because it it was a puzzle. It wasn't even a real boss fight. I I put her. Above Iron Golem and below Pinwheel because with Pinwheel I still see some fucking potential in the way they implemented it. Bad of Chaos, yeah, exactly. And and like we saw some cut content earlier, right? If the Bad of Chaos was actually like a normal as boss, I think that would have been way cooler. It, it, it would feel like an actual boss. So yeah, they were rushed, but honestly, the boss was kind of shit. Atorius, I don't have to comp I don't have to explain much, right? That's Atorius, right? He he's definitely S tier. I felt sad fighting him because the way he was like corrupted and the way his movement and his fucking moveset was really cool. It felt like actually facing the legend you heard so much of. More so than Gwyn, because at the end Gwyn was just like a withered old man, right? But fucking Atorius felt like you're facing the legend you heard so much of. And the little flavor they had with like Sif and with with the woman coming in later to like put him on like make him a grave and mourn him, it actually felt like a big deal facing him and beating him. And people wanted him, wanted you to beat him, right? So it's pretty cool. I like it. I like the boss. Atorius was pretty nice. What's this? Can you tell me what this is? Can you recognize it? I don't. I don't know what it is. I'll meet. <laughs> I can't rate Calamite. I cheese that boss too too hard. I can't really say much about Calamite. Didn't fight here. Yeah. Honestly didn't fight here. I I did it with a summoning. I didn't know summonings would be that fucking broken. What's the first time I summoned something during my playthrough? Kinda lame. Honestly didn't fight here is probably the first. Uh Menace. The daddy of the abyss. Hill cool. Thematically, I felt he was still a little bit like underwhelming, especially because you can cheese him with arrows and shit from like above the fight chamber. It I didn't think I didn't feel like he was like a final final boss. He felt like okay, but like something lacked there. I mean the okay the cutscene was dope. It was something that that I was missing, you know. I felt like things were missing there. Low A, low A or high B would be for me. I think, I think high A, a uh, low A. I think that's fair enough. 
I don't have much to say. Maybe the lore would pull it out. The, the feeling... They tried to do something epic here, but I didn't feel it as much as I did with Oinsen Smo or Atarius or Gwyn. Pretty much just a cool boss, yeah. I think A is pretty fine. I would still put him low A. Like, under Sif, though. Even though Gwyn was way easier than Menace, I felt the, the Gwyn fight felt much cooler and had more emotions. So, we'll go with that. Uh, Sanctuary Guardian, I think was his name. Considering what we put in C, I think low B is an okay thing. It, it, it kind of set the tone for the DLC, how, how this is going to be a lot less forgiving, right? Because I actually struggled with him because he fucking rushed me down all the fucking time. He didn't want me to take my S's shots. Uh, thematically and lore-wise, I can't really say much. It was just in this beautiful garden and I felt like, you know what, it's kind of okay, but like nothing too too impressive. All right, you didn't do the second fight. Oh, there was a, there's a second fight with him. I think it wouldn't be better than B though. You can fight him twice. Yeah, I didn't do that. That's good enough, I think. B B is fine. Uh, Bell Gargoyles. Shittier than uh, Gaping Dragon. It was an early boss. It didn't feel that epic. Especially because the second one came in. It felt kind of like fucking nothing special. Because I think a boss should be like a unique unique enemy. And and that the fact that there were like two of them kind of uh, took away from it. It's kind of lame. But not shit. You know? Not shit unlike the second, uh, the next one. Alpaca Demon. Fuck that guy. The fucking intern made that boss fight. Who had the fucking bright idea to put dogs in that fight? In that narrow ass fucking arena? Because... Why the hell would you put basic enemies? Except Nito. Nito, I understand why he had the skeletons thematically fit well. But Alpaca Demon? Why the fuck would you give him dogs? That made no sense. It's such a fucking drag. It's not fun. It's annoying. Most of the time the camera doesn't even work. You know what? Top tier? No. Top tier of D? No, no, no. He's a, he's a low D. Fuck that guy. I wish I, I wish I put him in didn't fight tier. Fuck that boss. It's so stupid. Didn't like him at all. Uh, what's that? Is that Cecil's discharge? <sighs> First of all, that's, that sounds like a diarrhea joke. I put him low C. It was annoying. I didn't... I Later on, off stream, I watched how you can, like, basically one-shot him. When I did, because I fought him in a way that's, like, kind of proper. But I felt like... Like, looking back, there were, like, attacks that I felt like I could never dodge. Right? So I don't know how he's supposed to be fight usually, but... The way he can be beaten is kind of like anticlimactic, so low C. You fought him early too. Caesar's discharge, I fought him way too early, yet yeah, I could be. Uh well he basically gave me gave me the armor that I wore throughout the whole game, the rest of the game. So I thank him for that, I guess, but Caesar's discharge fucking diarrhea name and nothing else to it. Uh Quillac is fine. I think Quillac has thematically after the whole lore with the Chaos Witch and the Chaos Sisters and whatever. I feel like that's kind of okay. The boss fight is nothing special, I think. In the grand scheme of things, it's not that special. Uh, be wary of Amazing Chess, that's the only thing that's really special about her. I don't really see much of it, right? There's nothing too special about it. Carried by lore, yeah, you're honestly correct. Okay, let's, let's go with fucking Fire Sage. De Fire Sage Demon, it's like, who the fuck thought we need a reskin with a fiery theme? It felt like such, honestly, alone because he felt unnecessary, I'm gonna put him on the bottom of D. The, the game would have not lost anything by, by not including him. Like, he didn't add anything to the game. Probably one of the most unforgettable bosses that are mandatory in the whole game. So unnecessary, he didn't add anything. The game would have lost literally 0% of its content just by not excluding including him it's such a he didn't do anything it was just a part of the the it's a love boss gauntlet he's really lame not gonna lie don't really care for him centipede demon i think centipede demon can go here centipede demon didn't feel really feel special either uh the only really gimmick of the boss fight is that you well that you're like in a kind of like enclosed space and lava and shit but even then i first tried him i 
first try. That's kind of embarrassing. So he's fine. If he's mandatory, then I'll put, put Fire Sage Demon here because Fire Sage Demon did literally not add anything to the game. Centipede doesn't. Yeah, Centipede can stay in C. It's fine. It was kind of a cool little hint that he was basically like unactivated on like some kind of wall and the cutscene was kind of cool about Centipede. But else, I think it wasn't a spectacular fight. Yeah, Fire Sage, I think like the boss fights in Izalith were kind of mediocre. Izalith kind of sucks. Welcome back. The boss are not really cool. The environment sucks. It's all um, a mess, honestly. So do we need to adjust anything? Do you guys see anything? It's the worst area for sure. I agree. Um, do you see? Do you guys see anything controversial? I think the the tier list is pretty okay. It was the least finished area. Yeah, they could have put in so much more. But so the game's overall is really cool. The devs even went out and apologized for the Battle of Chaos fight. You're fucking kidding me, dude. For real. Yeah, Battle of Chaos was kind of a weird fight. <laughs> Fucking bed of chaos. I felt it was an interesting way, but it was really not a good boss fight. What well, the bottom tier does look about right. Well, what do you think about the top tier? What would, what would you guys change about the B to S tier? I think C and D tier is fine, but B and S, B to S, was a B A S tier. If you guys don't agree with anything, let me know. I'll tell you why you're wrong. I think it's fine. Notorious is the sole S is fine. My tier list would definitely be completely different. I don't know, man. I would put Menace and Calamite up in S tier, personally. I, I put Calamite and didn't fight because I feel like it wasn't fair the way I beat her. So I, I, I don't want to rate him. But overall, I, I think I would probably put him in S tier too because the way it was always looming over the whole DLC was pretty cool. If I fought him like you're supposed to, I would feel like a fucking dragon hunter, you know, fucking... Monster Hunter up in this. So, um, I probably would have put him in S. Menace in S tier, I can see that, but I felt like something was lacking. I felt like Menace never had really had like the final boss of the DLC. Vibes? I feel like something was missing. Okay, like his hand first wrecked you to the past, and then the hand wrecked you back to. Well, down to the arena and the cutscenes. I felt like something was missing. Right? I just like that the fight is so frantic. I actually have to Google what frantic means. Distraught with fear, anxiety, or other emotion. Okay, interesting. Yeah, th that really came didn't come across with me. It it, it was very frantic. <laughs> I learned a new word. It was very fast chaotic, and I but I somehow I felt like the magic he used it felt like kind of misplaced. The father of the abyss, uh, ever looming danger in the whole world of. Dark Souls felt like something was missing. So I put him actually in low A. I do like his design a lot. He looks very fucking cool. But aside from that, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't really change him. You think Atorius is a little bit overrated? I feel like the, the reasoning why Atorius is in S is because it feels like you're finally facing a legend. A, a guy you actually heard a lot about who was praised, who was like celebrated as a hero. Even though apparently he's not the person fighting back the Abyss, whoever that was then. Um, I thought it was a big deal. Even after you beat him, people said like, hey, thank you for taking him down. And people were still mourning. I felt he was like very, very much, very much like a big piece of the story. And it was you. Oh, yeah, because I went back in the past and beat Manus. Damn, that's pretty uh, fucking... Uh, dude, I hate fucking time plots, but hey, that's fine. Yeah, you find Notorious totally corrupted by the by the abyss. I still thought he was so cool. Because okay, so even in the base game, basically my my future was that I went back into the past. Okay, that you just finished the job by killing Manus. You're right, but I think like Atorius is still pretty that's the reason, because he seems so legendary. Same could be said about Gwyn, but Gwyn was already like hollowed out, like on his last verge of life, if you could even call that. So he doesn't carry exactly the same way. And I felt like the fight in Atorius Colosseum or whatever, it kind of drove that feeling home, you know? And with Gwyn, you could the fight was okay because I thought it was a bit too easy because I could you could just parry him and with like five parries he would be dead. Something like that. Maybe even more, but you know. 
I don't know. And Orange and Small, I already said why they're not in S, but I thought like Orange and Small are very cool too. The glitches kept them away from S. But yeah, I think I'll let it stay this way. Yeah, they wouldn't be S for me either. If if the glitches were not were not there, I would probably both have put them in S, honestly. But yeah, also because I will probably upload that to YouTube. Hello YouTube, please follow me on Twitch. If you didn't already, so thank you. Um, but I don't like the Dark Souls boss one too much. Honestly, that's fine. And a lot of them were bad. A lot of them were unenjoyable. Shelling Monk has. I'm sorry, dude. I'm a sellout. A sellout with 45 followers. But hey, <laughs> pretty dope game. I like that game a lot. So I think we're gonna leave it at that.